are strictly youth. Now, before we go any further, I would love to give you a brief, a brief background of how this day comes about. This day dates back 22 years ago, exactly 22 years ago. On August 12th, August 12th 1999, that's when the United Nations General Assembly sat down in Portugal, Lisbon, with the World Conference of Ministers to recommend the World International Youth Day. Now, it is with this background that we, the youth, are celebrating today. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not alone in studio today. I have a woman activist, a lady that has been fighting for the youth since she was 17. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give her a minute to introduce herself to you, to get to know about her. I want her to talk about what she does. I want her to talk about, briefly, what she thinks compliance and youth are all about. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much. My name is Nakonde Divina Lilian, and I'm from the Tax Society of Uganda Matters University. In the club, I am the club treasurer, and I've actually been part of the club ever since I joined university with my first year as the club secretary. Okay. And in the next regime, I'm the treasurer. So I've participated in several club activities. I've joined several workshops and I believe I got interest as a youth and I got interest as a student that is doing accounting and finance. I developed much more interest in the current situation of the tax in Uganda and as a youth. Hmm. I'm happy that I'm part of today's celebrations of the International Youth Day with our topic, the role of the youth in influencing voluntary compliance. Personally, um, I think a youth, or I could define a youth as an individual who's 12 years okay. and 12 to, to 30. To 30 years. Yeah. Perfect. That is basing on the National Youth Council. But I could as, as well say Anyone who's between 16, okay, someone who's not yet an adult, I can say. An adult, that is why you can stand on your own and your, yes. So, okay. Uh, so, Divine, think, since you're here, I think the first question will go to you. Uh, for all those that are watching, we are going to be joined by another panelist, Turnbull Akampa, who is still sorting a certain technical issue. So, I don't want you to miss out on his points today. He's a chairman for Uganda Advocacy Youth Forum. Turnbull Akampa is going to be our panelist today. However, since he's still sorting out that technical issue, uh, Divine, yes, sir. what does being a youth stand for for you? You being a youth, what does it stand for? Oh. What are the obligations and rights of a youth? As regards to tax paying or a youth? Generally? No, generally, like generally, you are a youth. Okay, yes, I'm a youth. And I could say, the best thing on the age bracket that I gave you, okay. it's from 12 to 30, we can take that. And a youth in that bracket has so many obligations is challenged by the fact that you've joined adolescence and you know, you're know you coping up with several features in the world, several obstacles, several involvements that you're now getting to mm. interact with. So a youth in this part has rights to undertake several, let me say, national duties or family duties it could be business so here a youth is getting to interact or to get involved in different activities yeah. okay now why i asked that question is i wanted you to give a brief background on why today why the youth before we even indulge into tax compliance voluntary compliance i wanted us to briefly get that stance of who a youth is and 
you are the youth today here. Yeah. I'm actually a youth too. Yeah. And for all the viewers that are watching me, I've been part of the Mobs Tax Society. And in the Tax Society, I was the publicity secretary. That was 2017 to 2018. Yeah, no, I'm not that old though. So, today's topic, the role of the youth in influencing voluntary compliance. What do you think about this topic? Do you think we should discuss this before yes. going any further? Yes, the topic is actually good. Okay. It suits today's environment. Mm. And with the youth, that it, it's really good that the youth have been remembered, the youth have been involved. They've been good. Yes, so it's really a good topic. Okay. Now, Divine. Uganda's population is approximately 45 million. Yes. But you see the challenges. Okay, not actually the challenge. The good problem. The good problem is 78% of that population is all youth. Yes. Yes. However, why do you think the youth are hesitant to comply towards tax? And yet, they have a significant number of the Uganda's population. Okay, um, that's a good question. The youth, yes, we have the biggest population of the biggest population of the youth is comprised of Uganda is comprised of the youth. But not forgetting that the youth still are unemployed. We have the biggest number of unemployed, and with the age bracket being the youth. So there is no way someone is going to be tax compliant when they're unemployed. There's because if I'm not having what to do if I'm, there is no source of income or there's no base at which I'm going to pay taxes. There's no way someone is going to pay the taxes. So we have a really big population that is comprising of the youth, like you say, 78%, but still the biggest part of that population is unemployed, making it less tax compliant. So now that... We, have, we know what we are dealing with. We are unemployed, the majority of the youth. Yes. What do you think is supposed to be done? How can we help the youth from unemployment to maybe employment, from unemployment to maybe self-employment? How can we help the youth in this regard? The youth that are watching you out there, they want to hear you talk about this. Okay. Right now, I'll focus on the current period, now that we are in the COVID period. It has affected the education system, it has affected businesses, it has affected literally everyone. So, the youth have been the major part that has been affected. Why? If we look at the age bracket that I talked 12 to 30, most of these are still in school, then secondary schools, then universities, then colleges. So. The only way to help these people is to create incentives because at this point in time where businesses are closed, schools are closed, youth are supposed to become springboards for their own jobs. We are supposed to become our jo own job makers. And if we are trained on how to manage these businesses, starting from record keeping, starting from the literal starting like the literal startup that we can be given, investing in small projects. And that is how we can be motivated to comply to tax. Otherwise, without being hoped, without being given the direction, because some are laying back at home, they don't know, they have no direction, they don't know what next. But if these youth are involved in small projects, small activities, hand on self jobs that they can literally do on themselves, okay. I believe it could be a, a very good way for complying to tax. Well, thank you very much, Diviner. Now, in your introduction, you mentioned you come from Uganda Matters University. Yes. Now, it is on that note that I want to know, because it, I am positive the university has a variety. My majority are youth. Yes. They're still in school. I want to know, how has this university, in terms of youth compliance, how has it enabled you, the youth, because one of them, I can give it to you, you are here and you come from the university. That's already a promotion for them. Yes. So I want you to mention, highlight a few things that they are doing out there that are in turn reacting to voluntary compliance. 
firstly, I could mention from my own course that I'm doing, okay. we've been engaged or we are being taught or facilitated courses that are much more practical than the theory. Like I told you, I'm doing accounting and finance, but that is not enough. I have been introduced to entrepreneurship skills, self-sustainable projects, like everybody is engaged in a field that they literally are interested. Let me say I'm an accountant, but then I could be, um, I could love maybe rearing goats, or I could be interested in something that is out of class. In your university, you talk about rare goats. Do you have any farming projects that the university is sponsoring? Yes, and you, that is under the TCR pro. We have programs, we have student training for entrepreneurial projects, that is what it's called. And under that training, whoever involved, or oh, there are several students involved, it's open to all students. Okay. You get there, you're taught how to develop your own student plan, they teach you how you can get to a creation of a business, how you can develop a good business idea, especially in this environment that is changing, and then how you're going to manage the risks involved and how you can go about it. So even if you don't get these white collar jobs that everybody's seeking, you already have skills that you can use to manage these other outside businesses. Well, you talk about white collar. Now, I would love to also ask you the same question. White collar for the youth versus blue collar for the youth which one would you best advise the youth to go for in regards to voluntary compliance would you want your fellow youth to be directly employed by another person or for them to start up something of their own like i said we're in an environment that is really changing okay. so the youth need to be their own job makers because there are not so many jobs with the competition being high everybody is educated i can say not everybody but majority of the population is educated so the few jobs are being run after by a very big number so if the youth become their own job makers that is a much way to go forward okay yes. now she has talked to us about job makers, not actually job seekers. However, I would love to ask her a simple question, but before I ask her, I'll give you a simple brief. Now, speaking about the youth being job creators of their own, most of the youth are now adopting to the digital economy and they are doing their own businesses online. Now, my question would be, is now that we have a tax on social media, the twelve percent that was imposed. I want to know from your own experience. We are in a pandemic right now, and most almost everything is going digital. Yes. How are the youth coping up in this time where we have attacks on the internet? Well, I can say it's still a very big challenge. And how and is that a challenge? It's really troublesome. Is it, a tr is it troublesome to you? Yes. I'm a person who's not employed to the white collar, someone who's surviving from peanut. And if from the skills I have attained from university, I decided to set up a project, but then it's going to be run on media. Do you, do you have a business, a project? Um, I do sales on, online okay. for electronics. Exactly. Now, this question is going to you. Yes. Is this in any way hindering your compliance? Yes. And how? There, there are so many costs involved. The types... Costs. Okay. To operate these businesses, we, um, we, we need internet. And with the high tax that was imposed, the cost of operation becomes higher. But you're looking at the cost of operation being affecting someone who's starting from scratch. You're a beginner who needs mm. more capital, who needs more support, who needs much more motivation to start up because it really takes hard to start. 
So many people fail to start because they fear. But if I have the guts, the courage to start, and then I have obstacles that are hindering. People are running to technology, they're running to starting their businesses online. But if you tell someone that to go online, there's an additional 12%. I believe there are so many people affected by that. Your operation hours will be limited because you have little to operate in regards to money, in regards to data, in regards to air time. You've talked about fail to start. Now, I think that's where I'm going to ask the next question. Now, there are a number of programs or number of projects that the private sector, the public sector, the government has introduced now the idea of failing to start there are very many projects the Emyoga, the parish model program but i don't want us to indulge into that so much for you i want to know have you tried to source funds from the government maybe from any private sector foundation maybe even reaching out to the national youth council in any way no not in I, Not yet. I, yet, I hope so, maybe in the near future. You hope so too. Okay. Now, I would love to ask another simple question for you. Yes. You're familiar with the teenage pregnancies that are ramping because of the pandemic. Yes. Now, it's funny how Uganda is in a pandemic within a pandemic. Now, you being a girl, you being a woman representative, yeah. how can we help the women, the youth, the girls out there to solve the problems of early pregnancies and sexual production and health? Well, my opinion is the only way to prevent this is by getting the girls involved. What is causing the early pregnancies, the teenage pregnancies, is because the girls, I can say, are idle. Mm. They're in the village, they're in their homes, they have nothing to do, they are just there. <coughs> Eat, sleep, housework. But if you get someone, or okay. you get girls, and maybe you get groups, and get them involved in projects. Let them do crafting, let them do shows, let them be trained in something that will keep them busy. I guess they'll have no time for these obstructions that keep keep bulging into their ways. Their focus, yes. And from speaking about your tax society, yeah. has it done anything? Are you is your tax society having any of these ideas, or oh, are they starting up something? How is your tax society improving compliance in Uganda Matters? Because you represent Uganda Revenue Authority yes. in Uganda Matters. So I yes. want to know, how are you improving? Or how are you disseminating this information in your university? Well, the first thing that we looked at is first by letting the students, the, our fellow students, get to know why they need to be compliant. Because you cannot tell someone to be compliant when they actually don't know why you're telling them so. That's education. First, we need to, we first educate them. We, all, we usually hold, <coughs> sorry, we usually hold meetings every week mm. where first, like the new members are told about the club, what they do, and then we are we give them the bigger picture. What does your aid do? And okay. as a youth, what should you do in case, like I told you, we are told how to open businesses. What should you do when you open up your personal business? Or what should you do when you get to work for someone? So that is what we, we give them the knowledge or we inform them about the benefits that they could enjoy or the country could enjoy by being tax compliant. Because some people don't know, they just hear taxes, taxes. Mm. and. Most of them have that negative. If someone hears the word tax, they think they are being evaded. They think they are being Pulled robbed. Down. Oh, yeah, so, I understand. So we show them the good side and we actually give them the actual definition of what it is. Now, you talked about people having that mindset. Now, that means we have a problem and we need to solve it through mindset change. However, are you people, are the youth, you in your university, are you facing any challenges? 
and what are these challenges while you are preaching the gospel of voluntary compliance? Well, the challenges are is um, they think that by paying tax, you're reducing maybe your capital, you're reducing your profits, because already starting a business is hard, especially in this situation. Mm. So if you start telling someone that you're supposed to pay this, actually I realize that when some, someone is starting a business, the first things they'll look for is how to evade these taxes. You understand? They'll be like, now I want to start up this, but then I heard about the taxes. How should I eliminate this? Mm. So we are trying to curb that. Let them be tax friendly. It's not bad to pay tax, but they just need to understand why why they need to pay the taxes. Yes. You so, want to you want to give us maybe maybe two reasons as to why they should pay taxes. The youth out there need to hear it from you. You are an inspiration an inspiration to very many. I don't know if you are aware. You are an inspiration to very many people. So maybe you can tell them maybe two or one reason as to why they should pay these taxes. Um, I will start from here. I wouldn't be here if Ugandans or if we weren't paying taxes. That is already an acknowledgement. Okay. So if we weren't paying taxes, I couldn't be here. So taxes help us, help the government and also help us individually. They get back to us in the other run. If we don't pay taxes, then the service sector, the, the public sector will not be able to operate. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard from the woman leader, Tax Alert Generation. Well, she's part of the Tax Generation Alert. Now, the other, I would love to ask another question. I'm sorry for keep on asking these questions. Because I've been in this industry, I've been a youth for quite, what, seven years from now. I've been in the tax societies, and we faced very many challenges because people used to look at as part of that crew but now for your case is there any way i'm bringing this question back to the organization that i work for is there any way that you think uganda revenue authority can endorse can recommend can improve the youth in your university or even your social community so, um, uh, I, like the challenges we already discussed, uh, I suggest that Uganda Revenue Authority should start by first reducing on the tax burden. Let me say, like the tax that was imposed mm. on the internet, with most of the businesses that are going mm. digital, they need, to, they need to support the youth. These are people who are starting from scratch. These are people who are starting from their own savings. I can say small, small. So if if you reduce the 12% to maybe 8 or 10, I guess that is already support. That is already an addition to them that is encouraging them to. Well, if I want you to talk to them because they are watching right now. I want you to talk to them. I want you to advise them. I want you to look into the camera and tell them what you think Uganda Revenue Authority should do in its own capacity to help improve the youth problem. Then also, you, Uganda Revenue Authority should increase on its tax education. Okay. Most of the youth they are like, I belong to the university. I am happy that we always receive team from the Uganda Revenue Authority who teaches, who teaches about the tax education. But people out there, let me say in my village, or some people, because not all youth are educated, but you'll find that still these youth are engaged in businesses. So the tax education should go straight to the deepest point, to the least youth that is not educated. Let all youth in Uganda be conversant with the taxes, with why they should pay the taxes. I think this will be already getting them involved. Because as a person, if I pay the tax, and then my young brother, who's not educated down there in the village, but is operating a small mobile money farm, or a small kiosk. So there is already an imbalance in the compliance. Yeah. Yes. Well, now, just to give us more response, Uganda Revenue Authority, through its own initiatives, started 
tax societies among its universities. Now, they did not just stop at tax societies, but they went deep to secondary schools. And in our plan, we are planning on reaching primary schools or even nursery schools, if possible. Yes. Now, before we go any further, I want us to take a very short break and then we shall come back strong. For all the viewers that are watching right now, for all the viewers that are watching right now, you can ask us, you can ask Diviner, you can ask any question that you feel a youth needs to know or any question that you feel needs to be answered. Thank you very much. We're going to come back for a very short time, please. In chairs, the small one can become the big one. It's the same here. And here too. Watch every move. Record every number so you can plan better. No matter the size of your dream. Tomorrow's success belongs to those who keep today's records clean. File your returns today. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. <laughs> That's my little angel rose. Together with millions of other children, my daughter Rose is assured of learning something new every day. Moses, my husband, just like many other commercial farmers, has his business supported so he can provide for us. When my other little one was on the way, even with my pregnancy complications, it was a quick, smooth ride to Mulago Specialized Women and Neonatal Hospital. Also, my new baby was able to make it through his first days with the help of specialized equipment thanks to the reliable electricity which has also been extended throughout the country. All this and more has been made possible because of you. Join us and together let's do more for our country. Get your free tin at www.ura.go.ug Thank you for paying your taxes. Uganda Revenue Authority Developing Uganda Together. Kapo, you seem to be in a hurry. Where are you going to? I'm going to pay URA a visit. Why would anyone visit URA? Of all places? To know more about the Kakasa Business Solutions, namely Digital Tracking Solution, the Voluntary Disclosure Program and Electronic Fiscal Recepting, and Invoicing Solution, which have turned my business around. You know I need to be on top of my game to protect my empire. <laughs> yeah, if you know, you know. I too need to know what Kapo knows. Kakasa, be sure you are in charge of your business. Uganda Revenue Authority, developing Uganda together. My name is Edward Akais, uh, the acting station in charge. Uh, first of all, we want to appreciate the management uh, for bringing this new to this bus. And uh, we have been having a challenge of reaching to distant places, for example, Amolatar, uh, Otuke, uh, Leptong, uh, Kamdini, and uh, Apache. So we are really very grateful that this bus is going to make this work very easy, especially these clients who need the services of getting a tin, services of processing licenses, because the license for you to get, you need to have a tin. So this bus is going to reach out to each and everyone from those places that are hard to reach from us. Uh, really what I know and I applaud to clients that are, they should not be bothered never to incur costs of traveling. Uh, 120, 150 kilometers from one place to another because you want to obtain the service from URA. This bus has bridged all that gap. We thank management and thank the Commissioner General uh, for giving us this opportunity to such, have, uh, such success within us. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Yeah, 
mean, you are a Uganda Revenue Authority Developing Uganda Together my name is Del Gracias Chibirige. I'm the chairperson, Chamber of Commerce Lira. I'm very delighted when I was informed today that Uganda Revenue Authority has come up with an innovation whereby there is going to be a bus, which I'm already seeing and I've seen how it is working, that is going to help those places which are remote in the region. We have in Lango sub region over nine districts. We have Aleptong, we have Dokolo, we have Otuke, we have all the other districts. Now, these people have been putting expenses in visiting URA office in Lira. If we shall have this bus go out to these remote areas to help the taxpayers reduce on their taxes, it is a serious motivation. They will find that Uganda Revenue Authority as it says that we build this country together, has realized the importance of taxpayers and has come out to make sure that they bring the services of paying tax closer to them. Now, we've had a challenge, especially in the area of uh, getting driving permits. That is one area. The people of Lango sub region, from all the districts, travel up to Gulu. There are challenges that the cost of traveling is not easy, but at times when we reach in Gulu, we don't find the network. So if a person is to get a driving permit, one may make about three trips, which is very costly. I have an appeal that in addition to what Uganda Revenue Authority has done, which has been demonstrated today with the bringing of this bus, let us encourage the Minister of Works to do a similar thing if the office is not yet established here. I'm so encouraged as a person because I know what it takes. If you are going to pay taxes, you forfeit your business for quite some time so that you go to pay your taxes. Now, when the services of a person paying taxes are brought closer to a person, a person will know that the hours that are not put in their businesses are going to be limited. But you can imagine a situation where someone travels from Namasale, which is about nine miles from Lira here, to come and pay taxes. There is the cost of movement, and there is the cost of hours lost in not being in one's business. I find this a very, very good initiative, an innovation that desires to be appreciated by all people because it is coming to reduce and minimize the loss of hours that one would lose while they're traveling from the respective districts to come and pay taxes. Two, it is going to wipe away the costs that has been involved. As you are aware, we are in the lockdown. The costs have gone higher because of observing the OSOPs. By bringing this bus, it is very timely. It is a very serious innovation. My only encouragement is that the service starts as soon as tomorrow in all the districts, because I've already seen people being attended to 
and the services that are offered in the offices are in this bus. There is nothing that cannot be done in this bus. This bus is going to offer services for domestic taxes and even for importation. I've been given a tour of the bus. I've found that whatever you require in an office that is fully fledged is available. You have all the facilities. There is nothing that is lacking. Actually, I've been very impressed. I congratulate the Commissioner General and the entire management, the board of Uganda Revenue Authority upon this milestone, upon this achievement that shows that Liri Uganda has moved to some level of development. I have an appeal that I'm sending out to all people in this region, Lango sub region, which includes the about 10 districts, that whenever you see the bus rush to it, the services Uganda Revenue Authority offers are free of charge. Whatever you have, whether questions, whether being served, this bus is serving it. I'm also appealing to the entire country because I know that there are also other remote areas that this bus will be useful to. Please, Ugandans, let's embrace this development. Let's embrace this new development that has come in our country. The world has developed. We are moving from where we were traditionally to technology. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. My name is Kayo. I am the administration manager of Sino Uganda Mbala Industry Park. Currently, the investors uh, uh, within the industry park, uh, it is 18. But uh, because of COVID, uh, many of them are not operating. Um, only probably I think it is five right now they are still producing. The park is uh, 619 acres land, about 2.51 uh, kilometers square. As you have seen, maybe this land, uh, most of the land have been uh, like, uh, we already have plants on the land. Uh, this one, it is called uh, uh, Shenzhen, uh, Chinese electronic Shenzhen headquarter has booked this land for it is 40 acres. It is an electronic company. And uh, there we have a, a Uganda Automobile Group, which is assembling uh, vehicles. It's also a very big investment. And this one, it is e-power. It is also a, a, like a home appliance company. But as you have seen, because of COVID, the sidewalks and the ground road level work has been finished. But uh, people, even right now, the air flight from China to here closed again. Uh, before the COVID, we are like... Uh... <laughs> That's my little angel rose. Together with millions of other children, my daughter Rose is assured of learning something new every day. Moses, my husband, just like many other commercial farmers, has his business supported so he can provide for us. When my other little one was on the way, even with my pregnancy complications, it was a quick, smooth ride to Mulago Specialized Women and Neonatal Hospital. Also, my new baby was able to make it through his first days with the help of specialized equipment thanks to the reliable electricity which has also been extended throughout the country. All this and more has been made possible because of you. Join us and together let's do more for our country. Get your free tin at www.ura.go.ug Thank you for paying your taxes. Uganda Revenue Authority Developing Uganda Together. Welcome back, our viewers. We apologize for taking over. We were sorting out a technical issue. However, we want to continue with the show. We are joined by the chairman, Yafu, Mr. Turnbull Akampa. And it is on that note that I want to start with you. Well, Akampa, if you're listening in, we were talking about youth inclusiveness. We're talking about the significance of the youth to improving voluntary compliance. A camper today's topic, as you know, is the role of the youth in influencing voluntary compliance. So we want to hear from you. We want to hear from your own mindset, mindset your perspective, your thinking. What would you think 
what do you think Uganda Revenue Authority or what do you think the youth out there should do about this topic? What is their role? Which role should they play in voluntary compliance? We are trying to sort out your sound issue. If I don't know if you can disable your video for a moment, uh, such that we get your audio clearly. Yes, Akampa. Yes, Akampa. Are you able to hear me now? Perfect. Perfect. We can we hear, hear you. Very well. Hello? We can hear you very well. You can hear me? Yes, yes. Very well. Very well. Are you hearing me? Yes. Okay, that's good. That's good. Like we, had, we, had, we, had, we had we had we had initially, initially could you, could you switch, switch, disable your video and we only listen to your audio because we are having a bit of network problems okay okay i get, I get enough. enough okay okay that is good I was saying that it is important that young people get tax education and young entrepreneurs. It is important because when they get the tax education, they get information on the different taxes they have to pay. Mm. The taxes they have to pay as the young entrepreneurs. But at the same time, they get information on the incentives that could be there. Okay? Because they are there are different products that are uh, the products that don't have uh, to pay tax or even the tax is more minimal uh, compared to uh, if they don't have the right information. So what we can uh, annually with Uganda Revenue Authority through our national 
talked about, about, about tax education, education. and uh, yeah, it's a key yeah, pointer yeah, that, key point that I want us to talk about today. Do you think young people solutions for young people is a conversation that we should be having? Or you think we need help from organizations, private sectors, public sector, or the government? Do you think the youth alone can fight this battle because ideally speaking we have the biggest number of population do you think the youth themselves can support their own selves through this journey uh, uh thank you thank you for that question uh young people themselves when we use the peer-to-peer -peer approach okay for instance we cannot stand on our own without the support of Uganda Revenue Authority, okay? We cannot stand on our own without the support of entrepreneurs or businessmen and women who have been there because we learn and unlearn in business. Business is dynamic, okay? So young entrepreneurs need support from Uganda Revenue Authority, need support from businessmen and women who have been there, who have been paying tax, who have been compliant, okay, in as far as paying taxes are concerned. So it is a lot that young people have to do in terms of not just saying that we have the numbers. Numbers only are not enough if we don't get the right information and we don't seek this information. So it is very fundamental that Uganda Revenue Authority continues to partner with young entrepreneurs, young organizations, and associations to bring this information to the young people, okay? Like how we are doing today. I want to appreciate Uganda Revenue Authority for thinking about the young entrepreneurs. So when we take this information to the young people out there, the young, those who are in business, it becomes fundamental that they know their obligations, their tax obligation as young people. Five, 10 years from now, they will be the biggest, this will be the population that will be, they will be the biggest business women who will be paying Uganda, who will be paying tax as we develop Uganda together. So young people cannot stand alone because we are not an island. Young entrepreneurs are not an island. They need support from Uganda Revenue Authority. They need support from those other business men and women to be as mentors, to be uh, uh, to give guidance, to to give information, uh, to give even the nurturing, so that we can get a sense of direction, even when the business trends are changing today. Okay, we are in a dynamic world, and so we ought to be dynamic as young people. You represent an organization that stands for the youth. How has this organization improved voluntary compliance amongst the people that they operate through? Uh, our annual different platforms. First and foremost, we have a database of over 100, 157 young, young entrepreneurs who are spread across the entire country, okay? And uh, all these young entrepreneurs are doing different uh, businesses. Uh, with support from Uganda Revenue Authority, we have been able uh, to, en uh, to, to enable them bring Uganda, we have been able to bring Uganda Revenue Authority to them so that they are able to have tax identification numbers. That is the first step, okay? So that they know the importance of having, they have, because it is the first step towards one being tax compliant, okay? And uh, at the same time, Uganda Revenue Authority has been handy, has come on board to always give uh, 
uh, tax education to our entrepreneurs and the youth who have always attended our annual national youth skills development expo and even our youth festival okay uh, our youth festivals which have been happening annually we've been only affected by covid 19 but these are annual platforms so the more we reach out to into young people, the more we take Uganda Revenue Authority out to young people, the more they get to appreciate, okay, the, 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 the importance of being tax compliant because they will have information in their hands. And those who are getting low get started, will also get started with the focus. The focus following gets to know the importance of having teen, then it enables him or her uh, to be able to, uh, to to comply towards uh, all the taxes that are available that are in place. Speaking about compliance, you mentioned something to do with projects. Now, along with your own projects that you're introducing, the government has introduced projects, and some of them are the parish model, the Emioga program. I would love to hear from you. You are in the field. Are these projects, are these programs sufficient enough? Or we need to do more? Um, thank you. That is a wonderful question. Uh, you realize that as far as uh, in yoga, as far as the parish development model is concerned, uh, these are not specifically or not deliberately targeting young people, especially even the young people who are in business. And uh, so it is important that we can have deliberate efforts, deliberate initiatives, deliberate if, uh, initiatives that target young people, specifically young people. Otherwise, young people have been left hanging because we don't have specific programs, government programs or government interventions that are targeting young people who are in business. Uh, and at the same time, you look at um, what is happening with, uh, with loans. The interest, the interest levied on, 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 on businesses, on loans is very high. So it is fundamental that government puts in place uh, uh, loans that credit, a credit facility that caters, specifically caters for the need of young people, the needs of young people who are in business. What we are doing is we are now trying which, um, working with the National Youth Council uh, and the Ministry of, of, of Gender, Labor and Social Development, and other partners, we are trying to push uh, to her, and even Parliament, Parliamentary Forum on Youth Affairs. We are trying to push to see that we can have a specific credit facility that supports young businesses, young entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, one to access friendly credit services at friendly uh, loans, youth friendly loans, that are there 24 seven, that any person can walk in, any young person of this country can walk in at any given time and ask for a loan. And this loan is given to him or her because of, not because of his age, but because of being able to show what he or she is doing in terms of this. So if we can create that youth-friendly uh, credit facility, it will help empower youth business, youth entrepreneurs to come out and be the biggest taxpayers in this country, you guys. Least, least, but, but not least. least. I want to know from you, how can the youth, because we can't keep on asking the government, we can't keep on asking the private sector for help, how can the youth themselves come up with solutions to problems they are having? In just two minutes. Do you hear, you hear me? me? Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm hearing you. Are you getting me? Okay, uh, thank you very much for that question. 
first and foremost, it is important that youth shift their focus on discussing women with big hips, women with bums, or even which club has got who in the European League. Okay? Because that does not help. Let us come together and get to know what we can do within our communities using the local available resources. Uganda is full of potential. It's full of opportunity, okay? So the moment we change the focus from discussing which club has brought who in, European, uh, in the European League or Europa League, it, it will enable us be taken as development partners and even as serious development partners by the Ugandan government and even by the private sector so that we are a resource worth to be invested in. We need to focus on how we can make business, how we can make the best business um, men and women of this country, how we can be the biggest taxpayers okay, in this country so that we are able to even demand for services and well, well, that was a camper from Yafu. I think we should head back to our panelist in studio today. Divine, you heard him speak. Any views? Do you have any additions on what he has talked about? Yeah, my suggestion is just in line with him, just adding to what you're saying. Mm. We are challenged by the fact that every time people face challenges, every time we get a problem, the first thing we say is, Uganda government, where are you? That is like the same. So, you? where are you? That is <laughs> it, yes. So, every time we get a problem, we start running to the government. President Museven, you are a, where are you to help us? I guess it is now time to handle problems by ourselves because, in most cases, we know the causes of the problem, we know the solutions, but we keep on running to these people who we think are the problem solvers, and yet, in actual sense, they also have other sectors or other areas they need to tackle. So if we are being laid back because we are waiting for the government to help us, in case someone wants to start a business and then I'll be like, I'll wait for the government to give me money. What if the government doesn't give you the money? What if you don't get the money you're expecting from the private sector? Or what if you get less of what you're expecting to get as a donation from these people? Will you, run, will you stop that business? Will you stop your goal or will you stop your ability to start up? So just like Mr. Kampan said, we are the problem solvers, we are the lead, we are the people to keep pushing. Okay. Now these divine in about in about two minutes, I want to give you two, just your final remarks. We are very unfortunate that that Mr. Akampa had to leave the set. I would love to get to know his final remarks, his message to the youth out there that are watching right now. But we have you up. I think you're going to have to represent the entire youth in this country. So any parting shots for the youth that are watching out there? Well, my remarks to the youth out there is that don't feel small, don't feel offended, don't feel distracted by all these policies, by all these challenges that you face. We are the problem solvers, we are the businesses themselves, we are the springboards, we are the people that the world needs to push. So regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the economic factors, start small, manage the businesses, by ensuring good record keeping, because even if the government gave you 10 billion of shillings today, but you have poor accountability systems, you have poor record keeping systems, 
trust me, you will not manage the funds, you will not be able to actually file the actual returns that need to be given to URA, you will not be able to manage this business in regards to the tax economy. So manage your business, however small it could be, let it be a poultry project, let it be whichever office you're running, manage it, make sure that you put down all the records that you need, do that do what it takes to run the business as you keep waiting maybe for the support from the private sector, from the support from the government. Start small with what you have and let this other money be just an addition to your finances. Yes. All right. Well, you heard from her. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching today. I've known Divine for a very long time and she started her activism as early as 17. How spectacular that is. Well, you saved the best for the last. My parting shots for the youth out there are very simple. Uh, I'll have to even close the show. But before I close it, we are very many in this country. If you're watching me right now, we are very many in this country. And to make political sense, to make economic sense, to make social sense, youth inclusiveness is very important. We are too many to be insignificant. We are too many to be unproductive. We are too many not to drive this economy to financial independence. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today is a day that reminds us to contribute to this country's development. It shouldn't be political alone for all those that are watching me. It shouldn't be only political. It should look at economic, most importantly, the economic side. But not also forgetting the social communities that we live in. We need to be mentors. We need to be coaches. We need to be leaders out there. The numbers we have are testament that we can do this. They are testament that we have a lot of influence. We have the largest number in this country. We can do this. Today is our day. Today is the 12th of August, 2021. We celebrate this every year. Today is a reminder that we are champions in this country. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not alone in studio today. I've been accompanied by Irene Kabakama, Andrew Chakonye, Omario Bosco, Paul Kawanguzi, Noela, who is not here today, and Solomon Timbugwe. Well, thank you very much for coming in today. Divine, you're very welcome. The next time, this is your home. I want to add you, the viewers, follow us on our social media platforms at Uganda Revenue Authority on Twitter on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you very much. I stand Moses Malay. Have a very blessed day. Kapo, you seem to be in a hurry. Where are you going to? I'm gonna pay URA a visit. Why would anyone visit URA? Of all places? To know more about the Kakasa Business Solutions, namely digital tracking solution, the voluntary disclosure program and electronic fiscal receipting, and invoicing solution, which have turned my business around. You know I need to be on top of my game to protect my empire. <laughs> yeah, if you know, you know. I too need to know what Kapo knows. Kakasa, be sure you are in charge of your business. Uganda Revenue Authority, developing Uganda together. In chess, the small one can become the big one. It's the same here. And here too. Watch every move. Record every number so you can plan better. No matter the size of your dream, tomorrow's success belongs to those who keep today's records clean. File your returns today. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. <laughs> That's my little angel rose.
together with millions of other children, my daughter Rose is assured of learning something new every day. Moses, my husband, just like many other commercial farmers, has his business supported so he can provide for us. When my other little one was on the way, even with my pregnancy complications, it was a quick, smooth ride to Mulago Specialized Women and Neonatal Hospital. Also, my new baby was able to make it through his first days with the help of specialized equipment thanks to the reliable electricity which has also been extended throughout the country. All this and more has been made possible because of you. Join us and together let's do more for our country. Get your free tin at www.ura.go.ug. Thank you for paying your taxes. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together.